Spinal Tap moments. Have you guys had those? Because I feel like that we just went through one last week. Yes. Well, we we live with that. Every gig, there's at <laughs> every least, gig at least one or two Spinal Tap moments. So you know, yeah, we we're familiar with it. So now I, I notice that a lot of these moments uh, usually occur because of the digital age, and yet, yet as creative people, we seem to you know still embrace this digital age. <laughs> yes, you have to. You have no choice. But you're absolutely right. Very strange why we still use it, but. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a lot better than using an AI. That is true. Absolutely. Now, the last time we were together, I don't remember if I asked you guys how you're protecting yourself from these AIs. Because, I mean, when, when an AI can go in there and copy Joe Rogan perfectly, I, I if I were a musician, I would be absolutely horrified right now. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, especially as a vocalist like Janet. I that That's creepy. It is a scary thought because, you know, voices are all so unique. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can be copied like that. Wow. Right. They can copy your voice, your face, your... What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really, wouldn't, really wouldn't, scary. Wouldn't that have to start with uh, Congress or somebody rewriting the copyright uh, laws? Because, I mean, because I mean, I'd, I'd like to go back and see how they did it in the first place. You know, back when, when radio was doing its thing and, and we had all these copyright laws, we had payola laws and plugola laws and things like that. Because, I mean, we're really headed into an area that's very dangerous for creative people. They're going to have to. There's going to have to be regulations, heavy regulations and laws. Otherwise, it's going to be just a mess. Mm -hmm. Would it would it be helpful for you guys to have an AI when you when you're waking up in the middle of the night? You let that AI uh, do the do the work, and while you guys wake up and say, "Well, that wasn't a bad idea. Good job, AI." <laughs> yeah, plug it into your brain <laughs> and have, like, record your you know your cool nighttime ideas that always disappear in the morning. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Speaking of those brain songs, how how is it that you guys are able to trust yourselves to go from cuz I mean, a lot of a lot of music plays in my dreams, but but to take it to the the actual recording device. My god, I mean, how do you guys find that trust in yourself to say that's exactly what I was dreaming about? Well, it never is. No, it's always <laughs> a variation of it. Cuz I'll be sitting there, you know, walking or be in the afternoon going to the gym or something like that and I hear a rhythm in my head and I'm like, "Oh, I got to go home, you know, and write that on guitar." And never by the time I get home, I always forget. <laughs> yeah, it's always sort of, well, it was something like this. Right. The good thing is is now we have the cell phones that can record audio easily, so at least you can hum something into your cell phone and record it and try to use that to go back to. But, but even then you have to translate what you were thinking because right. you don't have a guitar on you right. and keyboard, everything, everywhere you go. So it's like, was that supposed to be a guitar lick or was that a vocal melody? I don't, I don't know what that is, but... You know, eventually it comes, It a lot of times it'll kind of come back. Like I, I had an idea in an airport once and I had no way to record it. So I did a little vocal thing into the, into the phone. And then, you know, I listened to it later and it was like, I have no idea what that was supposed to be. And then the next day, all of a sudden it all came back. So you never know. I'm, curi I'm curious, Janet. I, I know that you and Justin have been working to together and creating together for a long time. I actually met my wife at work, and people say, how do you work together? That's horrible. <laughs> I can't do that. But but I found that she brought out the best in me in working. And so, Janet, I'm curious, what is it that Justin helps you do in your craft that makes you better, and especially on this album? Oh, it's funny, because somebody said in a review the other day that I found my muse. Yeah. So. <laughs> I think we found that in each other, really. How lucky are you? That's my only question. No, oh I mean, to, to be able to work I, with her and create, I'm, I'm super jealous of you guys. <laughs> I think my lucky star is every day. We've been, we've known each other now for about 10 years, and I don't think there's a day that goes by that I still am not grateful for that. <laughs> I can tell too. in your music, it, I, it just comes through. It's really you guys rare because, rock. you know, obviously I've been doing this for a long time, and there's only a few people that I have had like a really, really intense creative relationship one with. And to find that in someone who is also your husband, your life partner, mm -hmm. holy crap, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it it we were a little nervous about it at first, like, 
like you said, people are like, oh my God, you know, you could ruin your relationship by, you know, working together and spending too much time together and you'll get sick of each other and all those kinds of things. And none of that has happened to us and nor do I think it ever will. So that's yeah, phenomenal. It's, it's good. I, I'm with you. And it's one of those things, if you know, you know, and uh, it, right. you wouldn't trade it for anything. So, yeah, exactly. exactly. And, and we avoided it for a long time. When we first got together, we both knew we were musicians and capable of doing it, but we didn't want to go there because we were scared that, yeah, what if we do screw something up? But it did the opposite. It just brought us closer. And it's definitely one of the top things that we look forward to doing together. When did you build the trust level in the way? Because I was because we're we're in a broadcasting class here, and and so one of the things that I always share with with these students is be careful with who you team up with because the day they don't show up will be the day that you dump them. So so I mean I I mean it's it's amazing how you guys are working together. When did you know it's like dang I I'm not leaving this circle. <laughs> it was an accident. I heard Justin playing a a guitar riff that I really went, wow that feels really good. So I kind of snuck in the room and just casually sat down, started humming a melody, and, you know, playing some little guitar with him. And it just came together. It just happened. So we didn't really have to talk about it. We didn't, we didn't do anything like that. It just happened, which is probably the way that it's best because that way we didn't have time to agonize over it or get nervous about it. It was just right, spontaneous. No, yeah, no expectations or anything. And before we knew it, you know, we didn't have any plans after that. So we wrote a song together. Oh, wow. And then next thing we knew, every other day we were writing another song. And then be soon enough, we had a full album. And it was like, holy crap, that was fun. <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> so what comes first, the chicken or the egg? In other words, like uh, when it when it comes to the naming the album, did you, did you have a concept first of what the album was going to sound like? Or did the name of the album come out um, maybe halfway through? No, we have, we have no idea when we, we sit down to write what's going to come out. There's no concept. There's no, <laughs> it's just sort of, you know, whatever you feel and whatever you're inspired to do. Yeah. So, um, yeah, once we get a few songs going, then it kind of starts to take shape a little bit. And then we kind of can figure out, okay, we need something like this, or this sounds too much like something we've already done. So let's not do that. Things like that. They just kind of happen as you go. Right. We've anytime we've ever talked about, you know, we need to make an album that's strictly blues or strictly this. Ooh. It never happens. Yeah. <laughs> we always just kind of dive in. And yeah, usually about four or five songs in, then we start getting the picture of, OK, this is kind of the sound of the album. OK, we're missing one of these kind of songs. Let's try to shoot for one of these. And it grows from there. You know that you just opened up my heart in the way that when I go in there and I listen to the music because I'm I'm one that that really does like to break it down and 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 to go in there and see if I okay can I hear the second guitar can I hear the bass what okay how did the vocals come in on this and how did the vocals time out to be with the drummer as well because I mean to me that that's how we you know that if, if we were in our mother's womb we would be listening to her heartbeat and I truly believe it's the same thing with music yeah absolutely for sure yeah it it comes from a weird place it's like thin air it's very strange and i'm so jealous of you guys being in that studio because you get to break it down track by track you can silence a lot of those tracks and just sit there and listen to those vocals or listen to that guitar absolutely and what's cool we found is because it's a double-edged sword could because we have the capability to kind of do as much as we want to a song sometimes you do too much to a song yeah. and it it's great to go back and sometimes mute some things that maybe you laid down that at the time you thought were cool. And then all of a sudden you strip it down and go, well, that's even better. You know, less is more. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, we'll just be piling on guitar tracks. Like Justin will play a guitar track and then I'll go, oh, I got this idea for this little jing, jing, jing thing. So then I'll pile another guitar part on top of it. And then Justin <laughs> will pile another guitar part on top of it. And then sometimes, and then of course you got to prioritize. Okay, what's what's going to be the main part here, and where do we put everything else? A little off to the right, a little off to the left, to make sure that all the parts are working together and can be heard. But you know what's great about your music is the fact you talk about you know overlapping the guitars. No, never once do I ever feel like that you've overcompressed the music. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's a big compliment because that's hard not to do. Yeah, very hard, and we really. With this album, especially more than any of our other albums, 
that was a big focus at the end when it came down to the mastering of it was to make sure we're not over compressing it, that there were dynamics there. And once that chorus hit, you kind of felt the song open up and go to another level and not be sterile sounding. Right, it has to breathe. And it's really easy to just compress it until it just, there's no breath in it at all. Right, everybody's concerned with, I want my master to be louder than everybody else's. Yeah, and yeah. you know, you, you realize there's a certain point there that you're killing the music. You're taking away any feel that somebody's gonna get from it. Yeah, to get it that loud, you gotta squash the crap out of it. And then you lose all the dynamics and all the breath. Oh, yeah. If you only knew what happens in radio when we do that, even though we have compression on the station, when you have a loud song, all of a sudden, uh, most listeners won't get the beginning of that song because it's so loud that we have to turn it down and fade into it. Oh, oh, I bet. I bet that's got to be a nightmare for you with radio. Uh, the first time, yeah, the first time you hear a song and it, go, and it comes crashing in like that, you're going, what the hell was that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, and that's a great thing with, like, normalizing, and a lot of people don't even think about that, that, you know, most people, you know, if they're listening to Spotify or iTunes, you know, there's a feature in there that automatically kind of balances everything mm -hmm. out and lets you go in and turn it off, and everything's set to be an equal level, so there's no point in killing your music. Exactly, because they're going to do what they have to do anyway. Yeah. Why does it feel like that you guys know who we are while you're recording this? Because, I mean, when I'm listening to it, it's it's almost like you're, you, you go, okay, this is how they're going to react. <laughs> well, it's funny you say that, because we were about three songs in, and we said, what is Arrow going to want to hear in this song? <laughs> Let's talk about Arrow's life a little bit. <laughs> you know, we you try you, you, what's that? you bring up a very interesting point when, you know, let, you know, what's, what's Arrow doing? But, you know, we, cause we, before class, we were talking about how it seems like we're into this generation now where it's all about the storytelling, all about the whisper talk. And then here comes Janet. It's like, thank God we've got Janet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, you, obviously I've been around for a while, so I, I have a lot of experience with, uh, Things, life and work and, and relationships and everything. So I, I kind of got a lot to talk about. I got a pool of experience to pull from. So hopefully, you know, other people have had experiences in their life that they can relate when to what when you go through. When you're doing the videos and I see you guys looking at each other, that's authentic. I, I mean, it, it's amazing how, how I mean, it's it's like you're when even though it's a video, you know it's a video, but to us on our side, we feel like we're watching you in a live performance. Oh, thank you. You know, it's just, it's funny because we've had to tell ourselves sometimes on stage that, you know, we are still performing. We're, we're a rock band. We got to tame down the marriage stuff right, a little there's bit. There's an audience. <laughs> we're going to be vomiting. But <laughs> nine times we just is pathetic it we can't help it it's just who we are and we're just so close to each other and there's nothing more than spending time together that we enjoy so well that's the thing i mean we're connected at all times and it's it's so natural that yeah sometimes we have to go ahead you know we just kissed on stage maybe we we shouldn't do that it's not very metal right exactly it's not very rock and roll <laughs> hey, hey the Dalai Lama says that uh, we've lived this life before I mean this relationship between the two of you have you lived this life before it's possible yeah I think so <laughs> hey, it's almost creepy how much you know we just gel with everyday life I mean we definitely have our differences from time to time but more often than not it's smiles and happiness and joy all right, what kind of merchandise is going to be coming with this album? And Because I really want fans to go onto your website to follow you to buy the merchandise. That, that, that to me, is the moneymaker. Well, buying a physical CD is the, the best thing anyone could do. Mm -hmm. Because, for one thing, it sounds a lot better. Yep. Um, for another thing, yeah, it helps us out not streaming it. Because streams, obviously, we don't get paid very much. Right. So... Buy a CD. That would be great. <laughs> Where can they go to find out more about the band and, and to get their hands on that CD? Because, I mean, you have to have a store. I mean, it's not it's not hanging out at Walmart, is it? That's true, yeah. Um, JanetGardnerMusic.com is probably the best place because that'll have tour dates. It's got the merch store on there as well. Um, occasionally, we'll throw stuff up on our social media page, which is Gardner James on Facebook. Yeah, and it... 
of course, you you can go to Amazon or any major no, outlet for the physical CD, and but they'll for, have it. Yeah, but we got T-shirts, eight by tens, and all those other little extras on the actual website. Speaking of that tour, when you're, I have to go back to when you when you're mixing it with all the different guitars and things. How how do you prepare the song that you've got in the studio today for that live performance? Do because you, you I mean right there you're gonna have to do some serious editing as well, don't you? Or does every member in the band have to be retaught the song? Absolutely. Um, I call it the Def Leppard syndrome with like hysteria, where they recorded so many different guitar parts on those songs and they came out phenomenal. But yeah, you come to a point where when you play it live what parts are important? What do you, mm-hmm. what do you play when, cause you can't possibly play five different guitar parts with one or two guitars. So we try to balance it out and try to figure out what is the core riff in that section, you know, that shines with the vocals and. Yeah. And do bass. I have to play on this song? Or exactly. Not? Yeah. You guys are central time. Does that mean that somewhere along the line, you're going to make your way to the Carolinas? Absolutely. We were, we actually were, yeah. in, we were in South Carolina a couple months back and we did a rare acoustic show that that's not a norm for us, oh, but we're starting geez. to come up with those. But there's talks of us coming back to South Carolina and we have yet to be to North Carolina. So hopefully that's in the works. We're on our agent's case about that. I, I hope so, because I really do want to sit down with you face to face and have some of this Southern sweet tea on a nice, you know, beautiful day in the Carolinas. And we have a real honest to God, eye to eye conversation. Oh, God, Aaron, that would be great because, like I said, we've, you've been with us from day one. We've talked every album we put out, and we would love nothing more than to sit face-to-face with you. Yeah, that'd be fun. All right, you guys are my witnesses, all right? I mean, you heard them say it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Please come back to this show anytime in the future. You know the door is always going to be open for you, and that's the reason why we had to do this conversation again. I was like, the hell? I, they, they don't, they, maybe the universe didn't want me to save that one, but we got this one, though. Yeah, great. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for having us. Well, you be brilliant, okay? You too. All right. Thanks, Arrow.